In the previous lecture, we were able to derive an equation that gives us the electric potential as a result of an electric charge that is assumed to be stationary and is assumed to be a point charge. So now we're going to apply that result. So three point charges are placed along a straight line as shown in the following diagram. So let's suppose charges 1, 2, and 3 lie along the x-axis. Now, if the quantity of charge on Q1 is equal to negative 20 microcoulombs, the quantity of charge on charge Q2 is equal to positive 60 microcoulombs, and the quantity of charge on Q3 is equal to negative, micro, negative 30 microcoulombs, calculate the electric potential at point A as a result of these three point charges. So point A is found to be in this position. Now the distance between point A and charge 1 is 20 centimeters and the distance between point A and charge 3 is also 20 centimeters. The distance between point A and point charge 2 is 15 centimeters. So knowing this, how exactly are we going to go about calculating the electric potential, the voltage at point A? Now. In the previous lecture, we were able to derive the following equation. So this equation gives us the voltage as a result of a single stationary point charge a certain distance r. So this distance r is simply the distance between the point and our electric point charge. So we essentially need to apply this equation to each one of these charges. So our approach is we need to calculate the voltage at point A as a result of each one of these charges. And then because our voltage is a scalar, it's not a vector, we simply take the algebraic sum of our three voltages. So let's begin by applying this equation to each one of these cases and let's begin with charge Q1. The voltage at point A as a result of charge Q1 is equal to Q1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by 1 divided by R1 where R1 is this distance given in meters. So to convert microcoulombs into coulombs, we simply multiply by 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So our Q1 is negative 20 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Now the 4 pi remains a constant. Epsilon naught is also a constant. It's 8.85 times 10 to negative 12 coulombs squared divided by newtons multiplied by meters squared. Now this R is simply 20 divided by 100 and that gives us 0.2 meters. So we multiply these quantities out and we see that our voltage at point A as a result of charge 1 is equal to negative 9 times 10 to the 5 volts. Now let's move on to V2. So once again we apply this same exact equation except instead of using Q1 we're using Q2 and instead of using R1 we're using R2. Where Q2 is 60 microcoulombs so 60 multiplied by 10 to the negative 6 and our distance is 0.15 meters. Now we plug those into our calculator and we get positive 3.6 6 times 10 to the 6 volts. And finally, we calculate the voltage at point A as a result of point charge Q3. So once again, we plug in Q3, which is negative 30 multiplied by 10 to the negative 6, and we plug in R3, which is once again 0.2 meters, as in the first case. We plug those quantities in, and we get negative 1.3 times 10 to the 6 volts. Now, to calculate the total voltage, we simply take the algebraic sum. So we use this equation. The total voltage, V total, is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Once again, we do this because voltage, unlike electric field, is a scalar. And to find total, we simply take the algebraic sum. So we sum up these three quantities and we get about 1.4 times 10 to the 6 volts. So the voltage at point 
A, as a result of these three electric point charges, which are stationary, is a positive value, and it's given by 1.4 times 10 to the 6 volts.